we're going to be talking about JSON and how it relates to dictionaries and lists. We'll mention APIs in a moment, and there are so many cool things across the interwebs that we can do with APIs and JSON. Um, we're just going to be briefly talking, touching the surface of these. So to pull back just for a second, what is the whole point of this? Basically, we would like our programs to be able to interact with the vast array of things that exist on the internet that you can consume for data. So for example, this could be your Twitter, Twitter feed, stock data, um, travel schedule, whatever you might need. And this is through what we call APIs or application programming interfaces. Basically, they're just services that exist on the internet that you can connect to and then download data, send data to, through all kinds of things. So kind of just give you a couple examples of these, and there are literally thousands. Um, here's, there's a website that will give you the weather. So you, you can send it your zip code, it'll tell you what the weather is. You can get definition of words, you can look at traffic data, bus data, whatever you might need. And here's a couple links just to check out, all kinds of really cool things. Some are free, some are paid, there's lots of them. How does it work for us to figure out, let's say we want to get some data in our Python program. Okay, so let's imagine that you want to know what is the weather in LA. So at a visual level, here's what happens. On the left, you have your Python program. Then you're going to write some code that asks for the weather. And we'll talk about what that would look like later. But imagine you're trying to get asked for the weather. So what happens is you send what we call a request using the request library in Python that goes through the internet to this API. Now, what, where is that? Basically, it's a computer, it's a server on the internet that, it, that is there. And it's operating to give data about, about weather for people that request it. So again, this can be a free service, can be a paid service, can be you know a freemium tier, whatever it might be. But there's a reason that maybe this is paid or ad supported or whatever it is, but this service is going to provide you that data. So you send your request to them saying, here's my zip code, please send me the data. The service responds back to you through the internet to your Python program with some information, which is maybe what's the weather right now, what's the humidity, what's the temperature, etc. So kind of a simple process. Right? And the code is actually fairly straightforward. But the question is, what data, what is the form of the response? How does that information come back to you? Because if it's just the temperature, well, maybe it's just an integer, right? But it, what if it's a lot of data, like the temperature and the humidity and next week's temperature and whatever it might be? Often, the form that it comes in is what we call JSON. Okay. Now, if you think about CSV, which we have talked about, a CSV file is, has some limitations because it's basically a giant table. So you can have rows and columns, and that's, that's it. So what JSON does is JSON lets us store more complicated data, like lists, like dictionaries, and other kinds of information in a simple text file. So that's what makes it more powerful than a CSV file. It does stand for JavaScript object notation. Um, note that this is not JavaScript. We're not learning JavaScript. Uh, the name is a uh, is sort of a misnomer. It's not we're not actually doing any programming. It's just a text file like CSV. Okay. Now, why are we talking about this right now? Because JSON is actually a dictionary. Dic dictionaries are built around key value pairs. JSON is built around key value pairs. So it fits really well with Python dictionaries. Similar kind of idea. In our situation, the keys are going to be strings. And the values are going to be string, int, and float, which is what we're used to, or objects, which we can just think of as a dictionary, so like another dictionary, or arrays, which is another way of saying lists. So basically, your values can be int, string, float, dictionary, and list. And as we're sort of used to, Objects, as they call them in JSON, are dictionaries, and they're basically set up with curly braces. And arrays, which we would call lists, are set up with square braces. So if we look at this first idea of a JSON object, or what we would think of as a dictionary, it's basically got your curly braces, and it's got a set of key value pairs. So in this case, we have weather colon sunny. So weather is the key, sunny is the value, just like we would expect. And what kind of data types do we have? Well, we see that sunny is a string, as we would expect. 78.4 is a float. And 32 is an int. So it looks identical to a Python dictionary. If you wanted to visualize this, as we often do, again, here's the picture. You've got your 
JSON object or dictionary, and inside of it you have three key value pairs. Just like that. Where this becomes powerful is we can have objects inside of one another. So in this case, we have a nested JSON object. So we have our outer curly brace here, forecast. So forecast is a key. Now, what is the value that's stored at that key? Well, it's another dictionary, just like that. And inside of that dictionary, what do we have? We have another key and here is my value, which is another dictionary key value pair. So we just kind of go level by level and we can access that information. So this is basically a nested dictionary. Forecast is a key. Tuesday is a key. It also contains other key value pairs. If you wanted to visualize this, again, forecast is our outer dictionary. And then Tuesday, again, is our next level dictionary. And inside of that, we have high temp and low temp. That's our two key value pairs. Now, JSON is going to call what we would say lists. In Python, it's going to call them arrays. So a JSON array is like a list. So in this case, again, here's our outer JSON object with the curly braces. And we have the key, humidity. And what is the value? The value is a list. 74, 79, 84, 83. Just like we're used to, the list is going to have indices from 0 to length minus 1. Visualizing that one more time, humidity colon, and then my list. Again, you can see here's my humidity. Inside of it, I've got my list, index 0, 1, and 2. Now, how do we actually use JSON? So what we would do is we're going to use a library that's going to handle the going on the internet, connecting to a web service, finding the information. So for example, we have a web other website that'll do that for us. Now, when we send that message to the website, what we call the API, it's going to give us back a string, which is basically a JSON object. From that JSON object, from that string, we, we parse it, which means to kind of look through it, extract the data that we need, we parse it, and get the values that we would want. Really simple example. Let's imagine that we have the dictionary that looks like this. So we have forecast is our outer key. Inside of forecast, we have Tuesday, which is another dictionary. Now, what's stored there? Well, we've got two pieces of information. One is a key, temp, and we're storing 89, which is my integer. And then we have humidity. That's my other key. Now, the way that they're doing it here is that the data that comes back is actually a list. So humidity is going to be a list of uh, humidity values and temperature is just going to be a single integer value. So let's imagine that we have a variable called JSONVal, and that's, that's what stores this information. Well, how would we figure out the values? Well, what is the low temperature on Tuesday? Well, it would be JSONVal forecast. That's going to give me the, the first dictionary. Tuesday, that's going to give me the inner dictionary for Tuesday. And temp, that's going to give me the integer, which we would know would be 89. What if I want to know all the humidity values. Okay, so JSON val forecast Tuesday humidity. That's going to give me just this exactly as I would want. That's going to be a list of 79, 84, 83. And lastly, if I wanted to access just one value from that list, I could say humidity list bracket one, which would give me 84. And you can use JSON for all kinds of web service APIs that you want to access. It's very popular across many, many services on the internet, in Python, in JavaScript, and all kinds of other languages. It's just a very useful uh, format for accessing and storing large amounts of complicated information.